in this video we're going to be looking at how to use an LED strip along with an ESP32 S3. So in the very first step we need to install the WLED in our ESP. So what we'll do is we'll plug the ESP with a USB-C cable and we'll click on the install button. Now a small pop-up will appear which will show different ports that you have available and at this point what you can do is you can disconnect and reconnect the ESP32 S3 to make sure which port belongs to it. So if I disconnect this the port will disappear and if I reconnect it back again the port will appear once again. So this way you can make sure which port belongs to the ESP32 S3. Once you have found the port you can select it and click on connect. Now in my case I already have it installed. I think for that reason the update shows but it might show here install WLED. Either way update or install the WLED. It will take around a minute. Now once it's installed the next step we do not have to do anything here. In the next step what we want to do is we want to clone this repository and open it up in the VS code. I'll be sharing the link of this in the description as well. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. I'll open up my terminal. I will change into the directory where I want to clone this and I'll clone this project over here. Once that's done, we'll just close this. We'll open up our VS Code and open this project. So inside of the VS Code projects, I have it over here and I'll open it. Now over here, you need to make sure that you have Platform IO installed over here. In case you do not have Platform IO installed, you can go over to extensions, type Platform IO and you can install it from here. And just as a good practice, after installing this, close this and open up once again so that way everything's initialized correctly. Once you make sure that Platform IO is installed, uh, you can come here and follow along for the next steps. Now with the project cloned here, we can come over here to the project and we can see different files. Now here, the one for our interest is platformio.ini. We'll open this up. Now over here, you can see that by default, this library has options for different variants of ESP32s. In my case, what I am looking for is ESP32 S3 with 16 MB of flash, which is this one. Now, if we were to leave this specific line as it is, by default, it will select node MCU. So what we want to do is we want to comment out this library, this line over here. We want to copy this, paste, and we want to set this one as default, the one that we're we want to be using. You can see that it will take some time once the configuration has been changed for Platform IO to update everything. Once the updates have been made, now our default environment is this one. And if you actually search this over here, you can see the specifications of that environment. So this is the environment that we are using. Uh, the board option, platform and different options which are specific to this environment. So this is the one that we're going to be using. Now once that is done I'll move on to making connections for our LED strip. So this is the main connection wire. It has one red, one green and one white. So just for the purpose of ease I'll be using similar colored wires. I'll connect the red wire with the red of the LED strip, the green one with the green of the LED strip and same for the white one. Now coming over to the ESP I will plug the red one in the 5 volt over here and the white one on the ground just on the side of it. Now for the green one which is the signal pin I will be placing it in the 38th number pin of the ESP32 S3. 
All right, with that, our main connection pins are done, and we can move over to building and uploading the code inside of the ESP32 S3. So back inside of the platform I.O., once we have this default environment set, what we can do is we can come over here to the platform I.O. We can select our default environment, which is this one. Click here and the build and upload option will appear. So first of all, we'll build the code in order to make sure there are no errors. Now this will take some time and the build is successful. Now once that is done, we will flash the code to the ESP32 S3. I'll click on upload and monitor. All right, with that, the upload is also finished. Once this is done, you can come over to your Wi-Fi and you should be able to see the WLED AP over here. So what you can do is you can connect over here and from here you can control the LED strips. So I will connect with WLED AP on my mobile phone. If it asks for a password, just enter WLED1234 in all small letters. Click on join and you should be able to connect with the WLED AP. With that, we will have this tab open up and we'll go to the controls. From here, we can click on configuration and LED preferences. And from here, we can set preferences for our specific LED. Now, in my case, I am using SK6812 model, but if you're using WS2812 or any other model, you can select from here. And in the length, we want to set the number of LEDs. So in my case, the wire is one meter long and it has 144 LEDs for every one meter. So the total number of LEDs is 144. And for our GPIO pin, we set 38. Once that is done, we can save these changes and we should be able to see the LED working. Now, even once the settings have been made, you can see that the LED strip is still not lighting up. And that's because it does not have enough power to light up. So what we want to do over here is we want to use these two wires to provide it with enough power. So for that, I will be using this simple power bank, which is able to provide enough amperes along with a simple breadboard to make the connections. Now, once I have connected the power supply, you can see that the LED lights up. Back in the app, coming over to the effects, we can choose different effects and they will show up on our LED in real time. So yeah, that was it for this tutorial. I'll add the links to all of these pages in the description. Please leave a like and subscribe if you found this helpful.